por fin abordamos eh, la sesión cuarta de este congreso eh, dedicada a la sigilografía, validatio et comprobatio, conferir valor a emitir, a emitir documentos. Va a abrir la sesión eh, la profesora Rosario Morullao, que es licenciada en Historia por la Facultad de Letras de la Universidad de Coimbra. Mestre en Historia Medieval por la Facultad de Letras de la Universidad de Porto. E doctora en Historia Medieval por la Facultad de Letras de la Universidad de Coimbra, donde es profesora desde 1993. E investigadora del Centro de Historia de Sociedades y e de Cultura de la Universidad de Coimbra. E do Centro de Historia Religiosa de la Universidad de Católica. E miembro de la Sociedad Portuguesa de Estudios Medievales y e de la Asociación Paleográfica Internacional Cultura, Escritura, Sociedad. Asimismo, es miembro de la Comisión Internacional de Diplomatic. O sus intereses de investigación están relacionados con la historia social y e religiosa en Portugal, ven como con la paleografía, diplomática y e sigilografía. Eh, nos va a hablar de sigilografía, nuevos caminos y e desafíos. Cuando quieras. Espero que me ouçam bien. Yo voy a hablar en inglés, pero solo unas palabras en portugués, uh, aquellas no ensayadas. Antes de más, para agradecer la paciencia de ainda estar en ouvir neste final de tarde, después de un día tan bom, mas tan longo. Espero no os aborrecer demasiado. And first of all, I want to uh, congratulate the organization for this conference and to thank for the kind invitation to be a keynote speaker, which I was very honored to accept. When I started my university career and began to be really interested in the study of choreography and diplomatics, a two and a half days conference held in Portugal about these sciences with such a vast number of participants would be basically unthinkable. This fact alone is enough to give an idea of the great development that these sciences have known in our country since the 1980s, which saw the first PhD and the master thesis on the subject of writing and written documents. A permanent ally of diplomatics, as its object is a fundamental element for the science of very ac falsi discrimine, sigilography has also experienced a strong development and a profound renovation since that time, and it also had to assert itself as a historical science per se, freeing itself from the traditional and minor status of auxiliary science of history, or even more reductive of uh, mere auxiliary of diplomatics. A key milestone in the evolution of sigilography no, no está aquí pasar. O rato, un dedo. O rato, un dedo. A ver si está. Ok. Ok. A key milestone in this evolution was Michel Pastoreau's book on seals, including in the collection Typologie des Sources du Moyen-Age Occidental, published in 1981. The author makes in this book a true apology for seals as historical sources, presenting the unique features that make them privileged and rich witnesses of the human past. They are multifaceted, combining images with writing. They were made to warranty authenticity, thus the information they provide is, is trustworthy, unless of course in the case of forgeries, and they usually bear a precise date, that of the charter of, to which they were attached. Furthermore, they were used uh, everywhere in Europe from more or less the 12th century onwards by all kinds of institutions and, 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 and individuals, which means that there is a very large number of seals allowing the application of statistical methods in areas where it is normally not possible to do so, like art, history of mentalities, or material culture. In addition, seals, both matrices and imprints, are the product of craftsmanship providing us with knowledge about metal and wax manufacturing techniques, the art of engravers and goldsmiths, the work, even the work of leather and textiles used in its uh, attachments and sometimes in the packaging of seals. 
In his little book, Pascal Ho proposes the creation of rules for critical analysis of seals, which were lacking at the time, and demonstrates the fundamental contributions that this study can bring to areas as uh, diverse as diplomatics, heraldry, archaeology, philology, onomastics, polyography, epigraphy, the history of law and institutions, the history of art, culture, religions, and mental attitudes, social structures, material life. In the 40 years between the publication of this work and today, there have been many advances in sigillography, not only in several of the paths pointed out by Pastor Ho, but also in, in, uh, but also in other fields. It is about some of these advances, advances that I intend to speak today, as well as about what I consider as the most important challenges sigillography faces today. Without worrying about being exhaustive, I will try to focus on what have been the sigillographic developments, mostly in the Western Europe, with a special emphasis in France, Belgium, Spain, and the United Kingdom, which I know best, and of course, also and mainly in Portugal. And let us start by uh, let us start by a quick look at what existed during the uh, until the 1980s in order to better assess the progress that has taken place. And of course, this is all, trying to to resume all this uh, means that uh, I'm going to simplify and trying to give the the main. Um, my, the, the, the main uh, paths uh, in a very short way. Well, until uh, okay, until the end of 1980s, the main works in the field of sigillography were essentially some uh, some catalogues and seals inventories. Several countries had known ambitious molding and cat cataloging campaigns during the second half of the 19th and the first half of the 20th century. These campaigns were especially important in France, resulting in monumental publications such as those by Duedac, associating printed catalogues and seal casts. From the first decades of 20th century onwards, the development of, photogra of photography printing made it possible to produce new catalogues profusely illustrated with photographs, as of which I present as examples those of Spanish and Catalan seals. Many other catalogues appeared during the following decades, of which I highlight the, these two, the, of the most important example, I highlight two of the most important examples, the monumental catalogue of seals from the National Archives of Spain uh, and the corpus of French seals uh, from the Middle Ages, the first volume of it uh, was, was published in 1980. And meanwhile, in 1958, uh, a committee of sigillography was created within the scope of the International Council of Archives. The connection to ICA entailed a serious problem. Only uh, archivists could be members of this committee. And this helps to understand uh, why it intervened, it intervened mostly in areas linked to archival issues, like conservation and the restoration of seals, promoting round tables and uh, scientific meetings on these subjects. The committee also sponsored the edition of the International Vocabulary of Sigillography, issued in 1990, and fundamental both for terminological accuracy and for the creation of um, specific methodology for describing seals. In Portugal at that time, sigillography was mainly cultivated outside universities among archivists and heraldists. Seals are essential sources for the study of heraldry, as you uh, very well know. No archive had a, a catalogue of seals, and in fact, today is not very different yet. In 1983, the Marquis of Abrantes uh, published his well-known book on Portuguese medieval seals. Many consider it a catalogue of Portuguese seals, but in fact it isn't. It just presents a large selection of imprints, mostly from the National Archives and the District Archives of Braga, as well as matrices preserved in private collections. With all, with all its flaws and errors, this work came to render an enormous service to Portuguese sigillography and was the basis for many studies carried out until the 21st century and the appearance of new approaches to seals. The Marquis was a member of the Portuguese Institute of Heraldry, which sponsored and published, as, this, as it still does today, many of the sigillographic studies carried out in our country, thanks mainly to its journal, Armas e Trofeus. This kind of societies um, play a fundamental role on development of sigillographic uh, knowledge 
uh, and this kind of societies that the, the French call Société Savante, and I, I must say I didn't know how to say it in English, so I said in French. In French, they play a fundamental role. They have been playing um, a fundamental role on development of geographic studies, as I said. Uh, and I can, and among these societies, I must mention the British one, the British uh, Society of uh, uh, Antiquaries of London and its journal, as well as the French Society for Heraldry and Sigillography, which not only publishes the Revue Française d'Héraldique et Sigillographie, but also informs on new publications and scientific me meetings worldwide within the scope of these two subjects, and also publishes an updated French bibliography on heraldry and seal studies. The growing existence of inventories and catalogues led, uh, of course, to a greater knowledge of seals and their potential as historical sources, and new publications emerged. Diplomatics was also developing uh, at that time, so when diplomatics uh, study chanceries, for instance, uh, they are going to study seals as, a, uh, as, um, as part of their studies. And we have here, uh, I have here next to me someone that has studied seals and uh, has a, an article that I never forgot about the importance of mentions of descriptions of seals uh, in order to, uh, to get to know seals that have already disappeared. It always comes to my mind when I, have, uh, when I do this, this kind of work. Um, as I was saying, the growing ex existence of inventories and catalogues led to a greater uh, knowledge of seals and new publications emerged. And one of them is uh, the very well known uh, three volumes book by the Italian Giacomo Vascape, published between the end of the 1960s and the, the end of the 1970s. All of these works paved the way for new geographic approaches and exhibitions and for the organization of scientific meetings and subs the subsequent publication of their proceedings, thus spreading the awareness on the importance of seals. A good example of this dynamic is the first seasonographic conference held in Spain in 1987, following the appearance of a treatise on seasonographic matrices and an exhibition on sealing practices that took place at the National Archives. In both these editions, the name of Faustino Menendez Vidal stands out. He was one of the main authorities in the field in Spain and not only in Spain. In the meanwhile, new fields of history were being developed, like the history of mentalities and culture, the history of symbols, and therefore of emblematic in general, and heraldry in particular. The traditional so-called auxiliary sciences of history were being renewed and finding their own new, new paths, and at the same time, postgraduate studies were being developed, allowing young researchers to become interested in these new subjects. In Portugal, the interest on seals was mainly developed in the Faculty of Arts of the University of Coimbra, where there, were, there, there was already a long and well-established tradition of studies in paleography and diplomatics. In this university, in the beginning of the 21st century, uh, an optional course of introduction to sigillography was created, a profound curricular reform dictated its end uh, seven years ago. There was also an exhibition of the collection of seals replicas owned by the faculty in to, to 2003, and there were two PhD theses on ecclesiastical chanceries, coming from diplomatics, uh, uh, that uh, uh, these, there were these two PhD theses on ecclesiastical chances, uh, chances that were presented, one in 2000 and the other in 2005, both giving seals a, a special prominence. Uh, besides, there was a guide to Portuguese geography that was published by the author of one of these theses, Saul Gomes, my colleague, uh, following the example of other geographic guides, namely the guide to British medieval seals uh, from Paul Harvey and Andrew McQuinness. In short, the, the 10th century, first century began uh, with uh, a strong growth of geographic studies, which follow multiple paths, among which I highlight these seven that you can see here. For each of them, I will try to present some examples in order to give a, a quick overview of what is being done in each of them. The first path is the more traditional one, uh, linked to diplomatics, studying the seals above all as a validation process used by several centuries. We find these approaches, especially in studies 
uh, like the two PhD theses I, I just mentioned, uh, but also in catalogs and seals used by several entities, by religious orders, for instance, by kings. We have here two examples of works uh, in, in this field. Another traditional field, another traditional path, uh, connects sigillography and heraldry, as seals are one of the oldest and main sources of heraldic representations, as I just remembered. As examples in this area, I allow myself to present an article written by six hands, two of them mine, uh, on heraldry on Portuguese secular clergy medieval seals, and the poster uh, announcing the first conference on heraldry and sigillography of the Iberian Peninsula that I have organized in Coimbra in 2018, together with a colleague from the Complutense University. Another path concerns the studies through seals of identities. Uh, 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 sorry, another path concerns the, the study through seals of identities, representation, and authority, increasingly explored by researchers, researchers studying the history of power and institution, namely uh, queenship and uh, female power. We can include in this category the studies for, uh, that you can see in, in, in the picture uh, on the seals used by the Counts of Champagne and Toulouse or the Countesses of Flanders and Hainaut. All these other books on seals, power and identity, two of them are proceedings of international conferences and the other was written by Brigitte bedos rezac that is one of the most important researchers in sigillography nowadays. Another field is especially linked to art history, not only studying seals as artistic objects, and we know many of them were made by talented goldsmiths or designed by renowned artists, but also analyzing their iconography, uh, as, uh, but also we're analyzing their iconography, sorry. As seals are usually dated, they help to establish a more accurate chronology for the introduction of decorative, architectural, or iconographic elements or models. Here you can see the front page of three PhD theses uh, in art history that have seals at their main sources, on the image of the kings of Aragon, on the cardinal seal of dignity, on the, iconogra the iconogra iconography of town seals. And in 20, uh, uh, um, 2008, in 2008, an entire conference was dedicated to seals as the new challenge for, um, for art history, and a written discussion on the subject was published in Perspective, the National French Institute for Art, His art History's journal in 2014. The circulation of seals iconographic models is also a trendy topic and has been the subject of a conference held in Bonn in 2019. Yet another field, and, most pro and the most promising one, uh, concerns uh, the studies on the materiality of seals, applying new technologies for analyzing their composition and the way they were manufactured, such as, for instance, computerized actual uh, tomography developed by Philippe Jacquet um, in this study about uh, on seals from the Archbishops of Rouen. There are studies on the problems presented by wax and lead, in this case uh, by lead, and you can see the difference between the two seals, the one that was before, uh, the before restoration and the, the after the restoration. This was uh, made in, uh, in Quimbra uh, by a chemist. So uh, that's, uh, that, that was studying for her master uh, project precisely what happened to the lead and uh, how to try to solve this problem or at least to stop it, to stop development of this mold, or we say that. Um, there are uh, also new and more efficient ways of reproducing seals that are being developed using techniques as reflectant transformation imaging. Uh, you can see some photographs, but we can't see them in, uh, in photograph. You must see that uh, moving because it highlights in different, uh, different parts of, uh, of the seals. And it can be very useful to read the, the, the inscriptions, for instance. Uh, so reflectance transforming imaging or 3D digitization, two examples here from different parts of the world. In addition to traditional molding, now with a range of materials that allow more accurate replicas with less risk of damaging the originals. Linked to this path, there are two very specific projects using laboratory techniques that I want to, to talk to you very briefly about. 
One of them concerns the human hair found in seals of Merovingian and Carolingian kings, studied by Maria de Leite Nilen and Agnès Prévost from the French National Archives. The other is the British project imprint, coordinated by professors Philippa Hoskin and Elizabeth New, combining sigillography and forensic investigation on fingerprints preserved on wax seals. This project is producing very exciting results, both for the knowledge of how exactly seals were made and manipulated because the impressions are there and they can say, uh, and it's possible to know if it was uh, this finger or the other one from the left hand or from the, the right hand. Um, and also, it, it is also very important for the study of fingerprints in a very wide chronology. Another field of research concerns seal matrices, which have increasingly been studied and which, in addition to providing us the knowledge of seals unknown by imprints, have a lot to offer for the study of metalworking techniques. The catalogue of medieval matrices preserved in the National Library of France, published in 2015, deserves here a special mention, as well as the proceedings of the conferences on, seal, uh, on the conference on seal matrices held uh, in 2014 in Paris. Here you can see a very peculiar matrix in gold that belonged to a Portuguese prince of the 15th century, whose identity is not yet surely established. What well, this gives a certain aura of mystery to this, to, to this very strange uh, object that looks like a ring, but was surely not very comfortable to use as a ring. Many seal matrices are found by amateurs using metal detectors, an activity forbidden in several countries, including Portugal, and thus practiced in a clandestine way, resulting on the impossibility of their study by specialists. Various solutions have been tried, and in the next England example is the English Treasury and Portable Antiquities Scheme. The British Museum website has a platform where anyone can register their finds, thus allowing the scientific community to acknowledge them. A quick research that I made before this conference revealed the existence of more than 7,300 registered matrices, which clearly demonstrates the importance of this scheme in order to rescue these findings from oblivion. And in France, to address the same problem and to bridge the gap between detectorists and the scientific community, an association was created named Sigilum Francie, which provides cleaning and identifying the matrices in exchange for keeping records and studying them. And very recently, the French Society of Heraldry and Sigilography began to publish a newsletter about these findings recorded uh, following the recommended scientific standards. Uh, in Portugal, there is still no program of the same kind, but I can tell you I have already been contacted by owners or familiars of owners of matrices uh, found in, uh, in circumstances that are not explained that, uh, and that they, they wish to identify their matrices. So this, this also exists. We don't know. It's completely in another, in another, in another world. Uh, but we have to be attentive to, to this. And in addition to all these matrices that I have already talked about, these that are find, found every day, there is about a very large number of matrices kept in museums, often as part of findings in archaeological excavations, the majority of which remain unidentified. In this slide, you can see the first results of the search on seal matrix carried out on the Madrignet portal, which found almost a thousand records, although we must bear in mind that Madrignet's search engine is not very accurate. But even so, it is an important universe of seals that is still waiting to find its researchers. And one of the most important collection of matrices is kept here in Evora, in the Fray Manuel do Snaco National Museum. And finally, seals are an important object of digital catalogues. Uh, sorry, of digital humanities, not only regarding their digital reproduction, but also the creation of digital catalogues. There are several projects that I'll try to very briefly highlight. The first one to appear was the, the, Belgian, uh, the Belgian one from the National, uh, Belgian National Archives. They were pioneers in making available online in a searchable database thousands of seal casts with their digitized images. 
<laughs> then we have the French uh, project, Sigila. Sigila is a digitized database of seals preserved in France. It includes the collections of casts made during the 19th and 20th centuries, as well as the imprints preserved in an increasing number of archives that have already joined the project. And then there's also another, a different approach, like this made by John McEwen uh, um, in DigiSeq, presenting in a digital format the entries from printed catalogues of British seals and adding many images of the corresponding seals and matrices, some in the RTI uh, format already mentioned. It is a very interesting way to take advantage of the immense information collected by previous researchers. Um, so you can see all these, um, the, all the files uh, as they were printed in this, in, in this resource. And of course, I must speak also and present the Portuguese project, project I coordinate, Sigilum Portugalier, that aims to, to be an, an online catalog of seals from Portuguese archives, as well as Portuguese seals kept in foreign archives. This project started with the seals of medieval secular clergy, according to its members' main research field. The project was funded by the Carlos Gulbenkian Foundation between 2014 and 2015 as the first stage of a large work plan, uh, which aims to broaden the inventory, uh, the, the inventory of the siderographic universe to all Portuguese seals up to the end of the ancient re regime. We are waiting for new funding opportunities to carry on this project. That, uh, anyway, uh, we are adding uh, seals not every day, but every month, or, or more, more, more or less that. And finally, Euroseal. Euroseal is a project funded by the, the Belgian scientific agency, aiming to establish an international network of sigilographers and to create a digital platform that will provide scholars with access to sigilographic data sets in multiple countries. The project members are Marc Libert, responsible for the Belgium Seal Casts database, Laurent Ablot, who is the leader of Sigila, and me as coordinator of the Portuguese project. In two weeks, we'll we will have its closing conference dedicated precisely to sigilographic databases in Europe. A lot could still be said about the progress made in these decades on sigilography and uh, seals. But the half hour at my disposal is running out, I think, and we are all tired. So I will finish my paper with images, images that speak for themselves and uh, with an appeal to. It is urgent to give proper attention to these fragile objects, which I have no doubt in classifying as a cultural heritage in risk. You can see how many of them are preserved. These are all seals from Portuguese archives. By their very nature, as well as for environmental reasons, and above all, due to human negligence and ignorance, most of the seals kept in our archives, libraries and museums are in very poor condition. The data collected in the Sigilum Portugalia project point to the loss of more than 50% of the seals belonging to the Portuguese medieval secular clergy, and little more than 25% of those that managed to survive are intact and in good condition. We must ensure that in our, uh, in our generation, seals are no longer lost. To this end, they must be inventoried, catalogued and studied, as it is not possible to protect a heritage whose existence and, important are uh, and importance are ignored. An importance as historical sources and testimonies of the past that is inversely proportional to the reduced dimensions of seals. Thank you very much for your attention. Muchas gracias, doctora Morujao, por su documentadísima exposición, por cómo nos ha llevado de la mano a través de la historia del estudio de los sellos y de hacernos ver clarísimamente en esta última imagen, que todavía está en pantalla, cómo los sellos han padecido por su fragilidad y por algo que usted prudentemente no ha dicho, que es por el ansia de muchos coleccionistas que, bueno... Eh, yo tengo un recuerdo de un convento de Sevilla en que no nos dejaban entrar hasta que una monjita nos dijo es que una vez sacamos por el torno unos documentos con unas medallas 
para ellas eran medallas maravillosas y cuando los documentos volvieron al torno no tenían las medallas. Entonces la depredación ha sido también algo muy duro para la psicografía. Ahora es el momento, por favor, de si hay alguien en la sala quiere hacer alguna pregunta a la doctora Borujao. Hay alguna cuestión? Uh, just to add a little, a, a little something to what uh, people just said, um, there was also the practice of cutting seals in order to protect them. So, for instance, in, in the National Archives in, in Madrid, I think that was the practice, the regular practice, without noticing that they were mutilating the charters. They, uh, they were cutting what proved their authenticity or part of what proved their authenticity uh, in portugal there was so there were some cases where they did that too for instance when they when they made uh, those manuscript th those fictitious uh, codices in the port in, in portugal archival uh, archives district district archives uh, the um, the books with the, the, the charters from the cathedral chapter, they have no, no seals. They were cut. I think they were lost or anyway, no one knows where they were, they are. And in the national archives, I was told there, there's also, there are also some boxes with detached seals. And I was told someone lost the envelopes where the information from where those, those seals came from were. So, They're trying, they're not trying. They asked me to try to identify them. <laughs> uh, this and collectionists explain a lot of the losses. Mostly, for instance, royal seals. We have very few royal seals remaining. Sí, el problema de las colecciones es que no han dejado huella de dónde han salido. No quieren decirlo de dónde han salido. Entonces tenemos el sello sin el elemento que le dio vida, que es el documento. Si no hubiera habido documento, no habría habido sello. Eso está clarísimo. Y nos merman, y de hecho, todo hay que decirlo, que los primeros catálogos se dedicaron casi exclusivamente a describir la tipología siglográfica. Y no, eh, hay, hay que esperar mucho. Quizá al, al primer, aquí en España, el primer congreso de siglografía que hubo, en donde se le diera la, la importancia de vida al documento. O sea, que hay que hablar primero. No decir, este sello está... En eh, Archivo Histórico Nacional Madrid, sección clero, eh, carpeta tal, número cual. No, no. Está en el documento emitido en tal fecha por tal rey eh, en el cual se contiene tal cosa. Eh, y entonces el único modo de darle una vida histórica al sello, porque antes los trabajos, hay un trabajo, por ejemplo, muy antiguo, que se publicó en, en España eh, por Patrimonio Nacional, que es la historia del traje a través de los sellos. <risa> al vestido de, a través de los sellos. Pero bueno, hay un gran futuro. Y tú lo estás demostrando aquí en Portugal y esperemos que pronto lo podamos demostrar todos con la idea de que el sello es un elemento importante. Aunque quede tan solo, estoy viendo la imagen superior derecha, eh, la cajita de madera de Bosch con el... Eh, eh, los que abren la caja y luego a ver si saco el sello, tiran de la... Del, del, del emnisco y zas, el sello lo tiene pero en pedazos ¿no? eh, eso es muy normal aunque se han protegido los sellos de cera a partir de la baja edad media y la edad moderna los pendientes en cajitas de, C, de, 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 de madera o de metal o lo que sea siempre hay el curioso que levanta y a ver si me lo llevo ¿no? y se lo lleva se lo lleva, no, nos deja a todos a él y a nosotros sin ello gracias de nuevo doctora Murushao y entonces damos por concluida la sesión de hoy.